Hey again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So today I am doing a couple things to get ready for this year's growing season. I have four varieties of seeds that I'm starting and I wanted to share those with you guys. The other thing I'm doing is I am starting and pre-soaking my second round of Ranoculus. So two weeks ago, I started my first round of Ranoculus. And if you're not familiar with that process, first before you put them in the soil to start them, you need to pre-soak them. So my second round that I'm gonna be putting in soil today is actually in my Seek pre-soaking right now. And basically what I do for that is I put them in organza bags by the type of Ranoculus, and then I put mine in a five gallon bucket in the sink with room temperature water, and I have those soaking for four hours. From what I have read, that is about the sweet spot where it's not too long that they're gonna start rotting, but they get a good soak to plump up and get ready to go in the soil. So I just put those in the five gallon bucket in the sink. I have the water running just a little bit to let some air flow through the water and those will be soaking for four hours. So while those are soaking, I'm getting some seeds started. The varieties I'm starting today are kind of random. So I have three varieties of petunias that I'm starting. I've never grown petunias from seed before, and these obviously are not for my cut flowers, but these I'm hoping to use in my landscape and my planters out in front of my business here. So I picked these up from Park Seed online, and I have the Easy Wave Burgundy Velour, um, the White, and the Carmine Velour. So, I don't know, this will be an experiment for me this year, but I wanted to go ahead and get these started. And you know what I just realized? All the seeds I'm starting today are things I have never grown before. So this will be really fun. Um, I am starting Buplorum, which is going to be an early season filler for me this year. This will be my first succession planting. And then in two to three weeks, I'm gonna do another round. I have two varieties of globe thistle, and I got both of these from a company online called Select Seeds. I have the Star Frost and the Blue Glow. Now, I not only want to use this in fresh bouquets, but I'm hoping that the globe thistle will dry, and I can use this um, in some dried flower projects in the fall. And then the next variety is something I had never heard of before. Um, I don't know how it works for cut flowers. It's something that I saw online. It's called the Maltese Cross Dawn Sky. And I just thought it looked like a gorgeous flower. So I just thought I'm gonna give it a try and see what it is. So I'm gonna start just a few seeds of that today as well. So before I get these started, I'm gonna go ahead and get my seed trays filled with a pre-moistened seed mix. I use the Burpee Organic Seed Starting Mix. It has coconut core in it. I really like this one because it retains the moisture. And today I'm going to be using some 24 cell trays. These are the Grow Ease um, Seed Starting Trays from Gardener's Supply. They have a bottom tray and a wicking mat, so they're self-watering. I really like these. And then I'm also going to be using, um, for the Blue Plurum, just a 72 cell tray. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get these filled with my seed starting mix and then we'll get these seeds started. Okay, so the first seed that I'm gonna start is my Buplurum, and I'm gonna be putting this one in a 72 cell tray. Now this will be the first planting that I start of this. In two or three weeks, I'm gonna do another succession planting of this. Buplurum is one that is one and done, so once you cut it, it's not gonna reflush and give you a whole nother set of blooms for the season. So if you want it throughout the season, you wanna make sure to do succession planting. So that's what I'm gonna try this year. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is mark my tag. And I always put the name and the date that I started my seed. 
And I've been reading about Bupleurum since I have not grown it before in my Cool Flowers book. Um, if you do not have this, I highly recommend it. It lists all of the hardy annuals that you can actually plant out in your garden. Um, technically before your average last frost date, which is what I am hoping to do with this. And according to this book, you need to put your Bupleurum seeds in the freezer for two weeks prior to sowing them in your seed tray. So I have done that. I took them out this morning. I got these from Johnny's. And then even though direct seed is recommended according to the seed packet, I'm gonna try starting them indoors because I wanna get a head start on it. Now it says to cover the seeds with a quarter inch of soil. So I'm just gonna take my finger and I'm gonna make a little indention in each spot of the cell tray. Then I'm gonna drop two seeds in each little indention. This says that this should germinate in 14 to 21 days. And then once I get the seeds in that little spot, I'm just gonna cover it with a little bit of soil. I'm doing two seeds per cell because I wanna make sure to get a plant in each cell, but then once they actually get growing, I'm gonna thin them out and leave the stronger plants so that I just have one plant per cell. One of the other reasons that I'm growing Bupleurum is that I'm hoping that this will be a good foliage for me for my early season market bouquets. Last year, the first farmer's market of the year that I did actually wasn't until around the 4th of July. And in our area, the June markets can be some of the biggest markets just because everyone is so excited for the summer. And so I'm hoping by starting this Bupleurum and it being a cool flower that I'm gonna be able to use it um, for some early foliage and take advantage of those June markets this year. That's the goal anyway. I'll make sure to keep you updated when I'm actually harvesting this. Okay, all my seeds are sown. Now I'm just gonna cover a little bit of soil over top of the seeds where I made each of these little indentions. Basically, I'm just moving the soil in so I don't see the seed anymore. And these seeds are small, but they are not too small that I can see them on the soil. They're like a charcoal gray color, so I can see them, which is nice, as opposed to snapdragons that you can't even tell what is happening at all. All right, those are all covered. Now I am just gonna go through and lightly mist each cell just to settle that soil. Okay. This one's done. I'm gonna move this out of the way and then we'll start the smaller cell trays. Okay, so the next seeds I'm gonna start are my petunia seeds. And again, I have never grown these before. I plant petunias in, um, I have some 10 foot window boxes that are out in front of here in my photography studio. I also have some really big planters. And so the idea for these is that I wanna use these petunias, hopefully if they grow really well, in those areas and also in my landscaping at home. Um, now these get pretty big in size. These are the Easy Wave. Um, there's the white, the burgundy velour, and the carmine velour. And some of these can get up to 36 inches wide, a plant. So that is some really big coverage if you have that in the landscaping. So according to these seed packets, um, six to eight weeks before last frost, and you do not want to cover these. Now they need a germination temperature of 70 to 80 degrees. So I'm just gonna set these on top of the soil and then they're going on my heat mat. So I better get my tags labeled since I have three different kinds. Now there's only 10 seeds per packet. So I'm just gonna put one per cell and then I'll overflow into another tray and then fill that tray with something else. If any of you that are watching this have grown petunias from seed before, comment down below and let me know your experience. I would love to know because if this works, um, this is something I would really like to do every year. Okay, these are tiny seeds. They come in a little vial. They are pelleted, so I'll be able to easily see them on the top of the soil. Okay, so I'm just gonna put one seed per cell. I'm gonna set it on top. So I'm just setting it on top of the soil and then I'm gonna mist it very lightly and that will settle it into the soil. Oh, there I go putting two again, there. I'm just gonna do a light mist over top of each cell where the seed is. That's gonna settle it into the soil and it's also gonna start breaking down that pelleted seed coating. So I got 12, 13 seeds in that packet. 
I'm gonna get the rest of these sewn and then we'll see what comes next. Okay, so I filled one whole 24 cell tray and half of another 24 cell tray with my petunia seeds. I had more than 10 per packet, so that was great. Um, they had either 12 or 13. So I'm gonna fill the rest of this tray with this uh, Maltese Cross Dawn, Dawn Sky, which I'll put a picture of it up on the screen, but it says apricot pink flower heads composed of clusters of florets. They bloom early to midsummer. I think it looks really pretty. It's also called Mock Sweet William, which that is interesting. So it says surface sew and press in lightly. It will germinate um, in seven to 21 days and it grows to about two and a half feet tall. So that should be an okay height for cut flowers. So I'm gonna put two seeds per cell of this also, which will use this whole packet of seeds. And this will be really fun to see what these actually look like. These are super tiny seeds. Reminds me of Snapdragon seeds, so I'm just trying to get a couple per cell. I'm gonna lightly mist this just to settle them in. Okay, I'm gonna cover this with a humidity dome, move these out of the way, we're gonna do the last cell tray. So the last seeds that I'm starting today are my globe thistle seeds. And I will put pictures of the two varieties up on the screen, but again, I'm doing the Star Frost and the Blue blue Glow. I got both of these from Select Seeds, which is a website I like to order some Xenia seeds from. Um, now these are actually a perennial in our area, I think. Let me look. Yep, zones three through eight. So I'll be planting these out in my cottage garden area, maybe some at home in my landscape, and I'll be able to harvest off of these every single year. So I'm gonna do a 24 cell tray. I'm gonna split it in half, do half the star frost, half the blue glow. And this one also is a surface sew. So I'm gonna do two seeds per cell, mist it in, and cover with a humidity dome just like the rest of them. One other thing that I don't think I mentioned when it's just surface sewing, I like to kind of pat the top of the cell just to get um, kind of like a level area. That way the seeds don't drop in any crevices or anything and get lost. Okay, I'm gonna get these planted. Okay, these are all sewn. These were so easy to put in the cell trays because the seeds are huge. You couldn't see exactly where they go, which is a really nice change. So um, I have three 24 cell trays and one 72 cell tray done today. I'm gonna go put these on my grow shelves and this video will pick back up when I am taking my ranoculus out of the water and getting those started. Okay, so my seeds are all under the grow lights, ready to go. So now I'm gonna start working on my ranoculus. My ranoculus have been in my sink for four hours pre-soaking, so let's go in and get them out, and then we'll get them put in the soil to start rooting. Okay, so there they are. They have been in here for four hours. This is my lovely furnace room at my photography studio. So this is where um, I kind of do some of the dirty work. But anyway, let's look at these. Holy cow. I hope that's focusing for you guys. Those really grew in size. I'm gonna get these all taken out and then we'll look at them. Okay, so here's what came out of that water. I have six organza bags filled with these corms. Um, now I have three different kinds within these six bags, or I got them from three different places, I should say. Um, I have a Clony Minerva. I have a Pastel Mix. Oh yeah, and then the rest of these are the Aviv mix that I got from two different places, um, which are like the standard looking ranoculus, just a whole bunch of colors, yellow, gold, orange, purple, red. Um, but then the Pastel and the Clony Minerva are a little bit different, um, more specialty, I think. So it'll be really fun to see how all these bloom and compare. Now, I'm gonna be putting potting soil in these trays that go with the standard um, 72 cell trays, so I have two trays here. I'm guessing I'm gonna need a third. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna get these filled with a standard potty mix. I'm gonna pre-moisten it, and then we're gonna put all of these corms in this soil to pre-sprout them. So 
First, I'm gonna get this filled and then I'm gonna show you how I put these in the soil. And then I'm gonna show you the ones that I started two weeks ago. We'll see if those have any root development on them. All right, so my first tray is filled with potting soil. I filled it about half full because once I get all of these corms placed in here, I'm gonna cover them with soil too. So I wanna make sure I leave enough room in there. But let's just go ahead and open. Let's go ahead and do the pastel mix. So I pre-marked all my bags so I know exactly what they are. So I'm gonna use those markers. And now if you're not familiar what, with what a rhinoculus corm looks like, it's almost like a little octopus. So it has all of these little legs um, or like tubers coming out of it. So when you put it in the soil, those you want to be pointing down. And now when you plant these outside, they need to be spaced nine inches apart. But when you're putting them in the soil like this, you can put them really close. Like I just um, layer them in here so that there is pretty much just a little bit of space in between them. Cause I wanna make sure to get as many in here as possible. And then these are gonna pre-sprout in these trays. And once they start getting a little bit of growth on them, they're gonna go ahead and go outside into the garden. So I'm just gonna keep following this process and get all of these trays full. And then we're gonna get the tray out that I started two weeks ago and see if there's any roots on those. I'm really hoping that they've put on some good growth by now. Okay, all of the corms are tucked into the soil and ready to start rooting. So what I'm gonna do with this is this is gonna go back into my furnace room. It's going to go down on the floor and that room is cool in temperature about, um, I'd say 55 to 60 degrees. I'm putting it down on the concrete floor, which will also keep this nice and cool. And it also is dark in there all day long. And so these are gonna be given about 10 days to two weeks to get some root growth on them. They like that cool, dark atmosphere to start getting rooted. And what I found out with my previous tray is, um, I had it up high on a shelf. They were just drying out way too fast. I don't think they were cool enough, so I moved them down to the floor, kept them more moist than I was keeping them, and that is when I started to see some root growth on them. So I'm gonna go put this in the room, I'm gonna bring the other one out, and we'll dig through here and see what we have sprouting. Okay, so this is the one that has been rooting for exactly two weeks and you can see the top of the surface is getting really dry and so I need to water this again. I found that it was really drying out pretty quick and I literally could pour water over it just like I did with those. It was really drying out fast and I wasn't getting any growth but I can see green now poking through the surface of the dirt. So let's just lift a couple out and see what's under here. Oh my gosh. Look at that, you guys. Can you see that? All of those healthy roots. And as I dig it out, I can see more roots underneath there. Let's look in another spot. Oh, here I see some more growth coming out. Well, this one doesn't have very many roots on it, but it definitely has some green growth coming out of the top. So I'm gonna put him back in. That one doesn't seem to be doing anything, so I'm gonna take it out. This one's just starting. See, I think that this got a little too dry and then nothing started to happen right away. So I think once I kept it wetter than I thought I should, that's when it's really starting to put on the growth. Oh yeah, this one's getting some green. There's a bunch of white roots and green growth on those. Yep, more growth on those. Oh yeah, this one has some nice green shoots coming up. So I think I'm really gonna start seeing some growth popping out of the soil on these. I think that they're probably just about a week behind because I had them too dry. 
I was really nervous that I was going to have them too wet and they were going to rot in here, but I think they need to be wetter than I thought they did. Oh yeah, look at this one. Look at all those roots. These are looking good. Okay, I am really happy with how these are looking so far. So I'm gonna moisten the top of the soil again and these are gonna go back in that room on the floor. I'm gonna give them one more week to get some really good root growth going and some more shoots coming up and then I will put them under my grow lights. I don't think they need to go under my grow lights yet because I don't see enough root growth on them. So um, we'll see what another week brings. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what seeds I started right now, um, my ranunculus process again, and then the progress of my ranunculus. I am really excited to get these out in the ground. So I'm hoping that if I give these a good, um, another week to root, and then maybe a couple weeks under the lights to get some good green growth, then they can go ahead and go outside. Maybe around that first week of April, that's kind of what I'm hoping. So anyway, um, I have a lot more content coming up with seed starting. I'm going to give you guys a grow room tour with all of my seedlings that I have going so far. So stay tuned for all of that. We'll see you soon.